How's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. Today, we're going to have some fun because we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison flip through of these two amazingly beautiful decks. So, um, we are taking a look at the Yonasa Yaos um, Tarot that is the jumbo size version. This is just the box. I have it out um, already. And so this is the jumbo. I confess, I have had this deck for some time and I haven't really used it. And it's because it's jumbo <laughs> and it's just really difficult to shuffle. Um, but it's so beautiful that I, you know, and she didn't have a smaller version of it at the time. Um, and then she came out with Yonasa Yaos, came out with Edition 7, it's the seventh edition of her um, namesake tarot um, in medium. And I got the stunning tarot and then I was like, this was out of stock. And then I randomly just saw that it was in stock and I grabbed it, snapped it up. I have not yet worked with it. Um, so today, I think I just wanted to like, you know, have a whole mood and look at the two side by side. I might talk a little bit. I might kind of go a little quiet just to kind of look at the art. And I just wanted to invite you along, you know, in the mood and the vibe with me, got my candle. It's um, about to thunderstorm, uh, rain and, and uh, have a storm come through here so it's kind of nice and moody so yeah so without further ado let's go ahead and um and do our side-by-side -side comparison of the yonasa yaos uh, yumbo <laughs> the yonasa yaos jumbo and the yonasa yaos um seventh edition Okay, so let's just talk about size and cardstock really quickly. You can obviously see the size difference and the difference on the backs. The cardstock for the um, jumbo is the cardstock feels the same to me. I'm not the cardstock expert. I'll I'll leave that to my buddy Lisa Pepez, but I love hearing about it and talking about it. <laughs> um, in any case, this has I think more of a glossy finish. If that's the right way to describe it um, and then the smaller version is a matte so it's like it's a matte cardstock and these are the backs the only thing um, about this one and the stunning tarot is that it feels like it's already like I don't know like something about the edge is like like folded like a teeny tiny bit so like you see I don't know, can you see it? Like the white edging kind of coming over along the side. I don't even know what that is. Anyway, the the uh, the backs are stunning, beautiful. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a flip through. Obviously, the color way is different. This is already feeling much, much darker and but it doesn't look like the image is chopped in any way. So starting, um, this is in a different language. It's not, I wanna say it's Castellano. I don't know, but it's not Spanish. Although a lot of it I can recognize a little bit um, because it's similar to Spanish. Anyway, we're just gonna flip. Yeah, color very different here with the magician. There's a lot more green and a, going on here and more purple. I, <laughs> so the Yonasa Yaos decks are um, in the Marseille tradition, although none of this imagery is traditional Marseille imagery. Uh, um, her guidebook is written in after the fashion of Jodorowsky, um, which I'm, I mean, I'm familiar with the name, although I've never read Jodorowsky. I know there's a little bit of like, like controversy and problematic stuff around that, um, around him. But in any case, mm, I have not, when I've read with this, which is very little, I have not read, I've read it like just very intuitively and with my kind of basic numerological and elemental 
associations. I hope that eventually when I study Marseille, that, that I might be able to, you know, tie that in. There is a PDF guidebook um, for, for this deck, which I believe you might have to purchase separately. Anyway, I'm, I, I'll leave links for all the stuff down below. I think right now though, that this deck is sold out. Um, but it's nice, you know, to share. I, I like to, I was uh, watching walkthroughs of all of the Yonasu Yao's decks, you know, before I had them. So clearly different um, colors going on here uh, with the High Priestess and the Empress. I don't know if I can like prefer one over the other because they are still in line with the color palette that I love. Wow, I love, I love this Emperor so much. I like them both. I like this dark version too. I had thought about, I've been thinking about not keeping this jumbo one now that I have this, but I don't know, this flip through is probably gonna be a way for me to tell. Papa. So the Hierophant, the Lovers. Yeah, it's, it's got a different energy in some ways, just with slight color changes. Yeah, just with the color changes, things feel a little bit different. The Chariot, Ocaro. Ocaro, I should say. Justicia, justice. So justice is at eight here in the in the Marseille tradition. This one's very similar. So the hermit. A roda da fortuna, <laughs> wheel of fortune. I love this wheel of fortune. I I love the wheel of fortune and the stunning tarot as well. A forza. So the strength card is at 11. Beautiful. Gosh, artwork is so stunning. So the hanged man. Death. Traditionally, um, the death card is not given a title. I don't know if that's like superstition or what that's about. I think I read about that and now I can't remember. So we've got like more of like a, the pink purpley colorway. This feels a little bit more neon where this feels a little bit more earthy. Temperance. The devil. See, cause like in Spanish, the devil would be el diablo and this is o diano. So I'm not sure, is that Portuguese? I don't know what, um, I, I, sh I should try to find out. <laughs> but this looks very similar, a little bit different, almost a different angle, <laughs> almost. A torre, the tower. <sighs> Such a great tower card. Uh, Estrella, the star card. Uh, Estrella, because that would be Estrella, because in Spanish would have two L's to be Estrella. I don't know, because like with this one, you can see more of that card than you can here, right? The title here kind of takes something away. Still beautiful, <laughs> still so beautiful. La Alua, so Luna would be moon in Spanish. O Sol, Sol is Sol, and <laughs> the sun is Sol in Spanish as well. Mm. Judgment, weasel, I don't know how to say that word. Interesting. Not much of a big difference, just the colorway is a little bit different. Mundo is the world in Spanish as well. I love this world card so much. Okay, so that's the majors. 
and let's take a look at the minors and see if anything is really different here. So um, the aces, um, so bastos are wands. The ace of wands, two of wands, three of wands, the four. This feels more like four of swords than four of wands, but that's my Rider Waite Smith influence on it. Very pippish here. We have the five of wands, the six. Oh, I love this. I love this. Anything with the people, I think I'm, I like the colorway here. But um, with the flowers, I think I might like this darker undertone over here. I don't know. I like them both. Seven. Eight of Wands. That feels more Waite Smith inspired. I like the hands in purple though here. And both the same color because this one kind of gets lost in the background with the green. Nine of Wands. 10. And now we have our courts for the wands. Sota de Bastos. Sota is the page. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm giving it my Spanish flair. Caballero. De bastos. I feel like that would be pronounced differently because caballero, it's close, but not exact. So this is our knight of wands, queen of wands. Oh, she's lovely. Yeah, again, I think I really like the people coloring here and the flower coloring here. Just really kind of looking at aesthetics at this point. Rey de Bastos. So Rey is the same in Spanish, but it would be with a Y instead of an I. So King of Wands. All right, now we're into our cups. Ace of Cups. Oh, I love this purple so much. Two of Cups. So there's no cups, just the flowers here. Sometimes that th threw me off when I tried to read with this. Three of cups. Four of cups. And this feels more like a Wade Smith kind of four of cups scene. Five of cups. <laughs> This makes sense to me too, even though it's the flower and not cups. I, I had a thing about this particular card, a, a reading I'm remembering like right now as I'm looking at it. Six of cups, that's beautiful. Although this has a five of cups kind of feel to it as well with the spilled cup and the sun setting. Mm. I don't know, like you could argue if you're reading it in the Waite Smith way um, that she's like nostalgic for the past, but it also looks a little bit like she's sad and, um, you know, mourning something or yeah, something like that. It's a different, feels a little bit like a different perspective, like slightly shifted, I don't know. How strange, but cool. <laughs> um, six, I'm oh, sorry, seven of cups with our B. <laughs> That's interesting. Colors look fairly similar still, fairly similar. We have our eight of cups. This looks really different. The shading is different. I think I might prefer over here. Still love it. Nine of cups. I love daisies. I think that's 
that's what these are. <laughs> Nine of Cups. Ten of Cups. Okay, now here we're in our Court Cards. Page of Cups. It's still purple, black, green, and white. There's no like new colors added, or there's just variations of the same sort of theme. Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. King of Cups. All right, now we've moved on to our swords, espadas. <laughs> okay, so the swords, ace of swords. I wanna like stick my hands in all the time because I want you to be able to see it. Two of swords. I like her with purple hair, all purple hair. Three of swords. Hear all the birds in my background, yeah. <laughs> Four of Swords. I love this card. It's so good. It's so pretty. I there's something about the facial expression that's very captivating. Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. Having a pregnant person on the Six of Swords is really fascinating to me. <clears throat> Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords. Has a little bit more of Nine of Swords vibe. Nine of Swords, so it's like interesting. This is different colorway for sure. <laughs> Ten of Swords. <laughs> so different. This feels very modern in a deck that otherwise doesn't feel very modern. So this one's a little bit um, different, right? Okay, so Page of Swords. I guess this one feels a little bit more modern too. Knight of Swords. The queen, Reina. But this would be like Reina. <laughs> I don't know if I was trying to trying to like read that as if it's Spanish. And the King of Swords. Oh, you can see the facial, the face feels really different in this one than it does in this one. Alright, and finally. Our pentacles or discs, um, auros, oros. Um, for me, that kind of translates to gold um, in Spanish. Um, oro is gold in Spanish. So the ace. Here's our two. Yeah, I think I, the people, I don't know. But I like it too. I like this one too. The three. Four, the five, and now we've got cups in the pentacles. So yeah, it's a little bit confusing, can be confusing. The six of pentacles, the seven, The eight, the nine, Ugh, I like that, with the seed. Ten of 
Ten of Pentacles. And here is our court family for the Pentacles page. Knight. Queen. So it's a different flower, right? And the king. Kings are kind of menacing in this deck. The king of pentacles. All right. Well, there you have it. That is our side-by-side -side comparison of the Yonasa Yao's six jumbo and the Yonasa Yao's seven in medium. Thanks for sticking around with me. I hope you enjoyed that quick little moody fun little flip through um, and I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day.